probably one of the last times I did pack in was with my dad and it was on his sheep hunt. It's been about 10 or 12 years ago and he hunted for about 17 days and just was not uh, successful. Did not find a ram that, that he wanted to take. And, and so, uh, so this hunt really is kind of, it, it's my hunt, but it's also, I feel like it's his hunt too. You know, I want to be able to go in and, and take that sheep, you know, for him and for me. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Didn't, uh, didn't uh, think that would affect me like that. So. This hunt is a is a a 21 year progress. It's it's been in the making for 20. This is my 21st year to apply for a bighorn sheep in Wyoming, and and I drew it. So that just that alone, you know, the anticipation, the excitement. I've been talking with guys, and it can almost get overwhelming. This is a culmination of so much that that's gonna happen you know can I can I do it the preparation that we're putting in for this and the experience that we're gonna have over a week you know at 10 11 thousand feet is that's the hunt I know without a doubt this will be an amazing experience He got him, dude. We just got here to Cody. Six hour drive, six and a half hour drive. Uh, just met with the outfitter about five minutes ago. He took all of our stuff. Gonna have it all mannied up and ready to put on the pack horses in the morning. Uh, tonight though, we are gonna have some prime rib at the Irma. So my, my dad actually uh, sat at this place, this restaurant, for 30 years. Every morning at 9 o'clock, you can find him in this restaurant getting a cup of coffee. And he'd sit there for about an hour, you know, and chit-chat with all the other older fellas, you know, about life and, and, uh, and hunting. But anyway, so this place got a pretty special meaning to me, and we're, I'm, I'm just, I'm super pumped. I, I cannot explain how excited I am to get this hunt going. Let's go get some prime rib. <laughs>
But we made it into camp. It took us about five and a half hours. Um, our outfitter, Lee Livingston, uh, just brought us in and dropped us off. So he's headed back now. So the last train to civilization has left the building. On the way in, we did get to see a couple of cool things that we saw uh, five coyotes in a pack and uh, one big grizzly bear. Uh, looked like he was on a on a, a kill. He paid no attention to us. We probably got I don't know four or five hundred yards from him. But nice big bear. But yeah, we're in here now. Tomorrow is uh, scout day, and this evening a little bit, and then September first will be opening day. So we're gonna get to scouting. Struggle is real. <laughs> Behind this big rock face. I'm sure the wind has calmed down some, but it ain't that bad up here. <laughs> day one's in the books, a travel day in, about 12 miles, 11, 12 miles on horseback. Uh, we got camp set up, got the bear fence put up, um, yeah, went on a little evening hike, climbed about, I don't know, what would you say, 12, 1200 feet, yep. probably about 1200 feet vertical, we got about another Oh, four or five hundred feet to maybe to top out over the top, but um, we didn't want to. wasn't going to pop over in there till tomorrow. So tomorrow is a scouting day for us. So we're going to get up, not real early, but get up and just spend the day up on top with uh, spot and scope and binoculars. So day one went good. Well, that was the first night. It was cold. Uh, we took the Cheyenne wind and brought it here with us, and we heard it. But we're here, and it's a good morning. We just uh, sooner we move, the sooner we get warm. Uh, I stayed warm, like really warm, in there in my tent. But yeah, wind. That's the key word of the night. Wind. It was really windy, like. I'm guessing, I don't know, probably 50 mile an hour gusts, but which is why we have our tents out here where we are, because there's a lot of dead timber in here, and that's the last thing you want is to have a tent fall, or have a tree fall on your tent. So, yeah, well, get a little, maybe get a little coffee and take off. spotted some uh, elk from down below they're up pretty high actually so we're just gonna try and get a little closer see if we can get a little footage of them see if there's any bulls in there because uh, that's one of the pluses about this hunt is I mean predominantly I'm on a sheep hunt and rifle opens tomorrow but also archery for elk opens tomorrow in this area and it's a general so
further um, glass into, but I just glassed, glassed some rams up, so I called them over. They're on their way over here. And I'll uh, put the phone on the spotter here so you can see. You videoing? Yep. I think those are a couple of shooters right in here. Yep, they are. Definitely. Yep. Yep, that one and the one below it. Yep. One, I'm one back, sheep. I'm back and back down. So there's a whole bunch of white specks all together straight above those trees. Like 10 of them, 11 maybe. Well, we finally made it up here. And, uh, took a little while, we got a little preoccupied with uh, looking some elk. <laughs> so, but anyway, we made it to the top. Um, it's sketchy and I don't like heights. And so we got to figure out a plan here. Um, yeah, a lot of things running through my mind, with mainly one is just over like six feet right here. It drops off like hundreds of feet straight down. So it scares me to death. Speaking of, do not let your, your spotting scope fly over the edge. You want me to grab it? Uh, sure. <laughs> Literally, uh, that is a just sheer cliff right there, a drop off. Um, so, but hey, there's good news. There's good news. There is like 20 sheep over there. So now we are just trying to figure out how to get to them tomorrow. Uh, so we're gonna brainstorm. We're gonna go check some places see if we can skirt around the edge down here. I know it can be done, it's just can it be done with a guy that's deathly afraid of heights. So, um, yeah, which is, that's me. Uh, so I may be crawling on my hands and knees, but there are some beasts. There's some big shooters, at least one or two in this group. So uh, we'll do our best to get to them. Well, it's safe to say I underestimated the difficulty of getting to this point, but we've all made it in a decent amount of time. We've seen some good elk. It's easy to get discouraged when you're walking up this hard hike and like, well, we haven't seen sheep yet. And sure enough, we get to where we're supposed to be and we got a bunch, a bunch of sheep down there waiting for us. So. We're gonna put our heads together and, and start to start to map out how we make this hunt in the morning and, and that's why we're here today. You know, that's why you give yourself the time is we're gonna have the opportunity to really plan this out safely and effectively and efficiently. So here we are. That's good. That's real good. This. It is. Man, that's, that's some thick goodness right there. Opening morning, we're getting ready to head out. Just got all our stuff together. Uh, we wanted to make sure we got a breakfast this morning and we were very prepared. It's a, it is a, quite a hike um, just to get to where we can glass them. 
um, probably I think we looked it up mile and a half thousand vertical feet and then uh, if they're down in the drainage that they were yesterday it'll be another probably thousand foot drop to get down in there and then hopefully get a shot if we get a shot then the work begins so we got another thousand foot climb back out and then back to camp so uh, hopefully they are there we get some eyes on them and get a shot off I originally saw them in that blue bag with all your toiletries and stuff, but they got moved out of there since. Okay, can't move this. sit down and we'll have me run back sure yeah um they should they should be in my tent just yell if you okay. can't find them okay. these are the things that happen when you get all excited getting so excited take off and boom but thank goodness we're like 300 yards 200 yards from camp this is really the first like steep hill we have to climb and it just hit me hey where are your bullets at so this takes me back to when i was a kid i actually we were on our way in mississippi on our way to the deer stands we were probably 30 minutes from the house and i remembered i'm, I'm like 12 years old i remembered i forgot my bullets so uh needless to say uh, my dad was upset so but we went back, got my bullets, made it to the stand. I climbed up in a climbing stand. 12 years old, sat there, shot my first buck that morning. So, hey, maybe this, this is good stuff going on here. Uh, yeah, shot my, shot my first buck when I was 12. Little whitetail in Mississippi. And, and so, hey, who knows? We'll see how it goes. Kevin found them. We got bullets. We can shoot stuff now. If I make it. We're probably, I don't know, 23rd and a half, something like that on the way up here. Uh, it's just, it's a steep climb. I said before it was a thousand feet vertical, but it's, we looked at it on, on X and it's, 1500 feet vertical climb and 1.5 miles so that is uh, 100 foot of vertical for every point one mile so it's you know probably a steady would you say 30 35 degree angle so anyway i'm slow not in the shape i should be in for this but uh, I guess if God makes you stupid, then he's going to make you tough. So that's the way to go. Uh, Kevin and I beat feet up to the top here this morning to kind of locate the sheep. Craig stayed down low just so we can locate them and kind of make a plan. So uh, we found them kind of right where we left them. So we're going to go back down. Uh, we're going to have to skirt them out around to the other side and see if we can get within shot range so pretty exciting hoping hopefully you uh, see a sheep on the ground here pretty soon
than we spotted the sheep at yesterday. We're in a bit of a predicament as far as how we can put the hunt on these guys, so we're spreading out. Mr. Craig, he's making his way, crawling a substantial distance to get a little closer shot on these sheep. They're all kind of bedded down in the same rock face we saw him yesterday, so Craig's got a tough job ahead of him, and we're here on the spot and scope, making sure they don't go anywhere. So, this is the tough part. We're watching Craig crawl down, make his way down into the bottom of this basin to see if he can get close to a sheep. And I was moving the spotter around, watching the, the biggest ram in the herd, and he walked right on top of a, uh, an elk shed, so... Definitely gonna go pick that up at some point before we leave here, but I can't believe there's an elk shed at 11,000 feet up here. That blows my mind. Kevin just found a match to that shed. So, we're gonna go ahead and split that set. If we have the energy to climb down and up and go get him, that is, so we'll see. Wow, we can't see Craig anymore. He dropped down to the left here. So, that's a, the tough part about trying to get this on film is that we don't know which ram he's gonna shoot if he gets a shot, so we'll see if we can get lucky and get it on film, but uh, ultimately, we'll see if he knocks down a ram and we'll go get some close-up footage of it. Little update, it's almost uh, one o'clock. And Craig is pretty much all the way at the bottom now. I can't see him anymore. Um, but he can't be any further than 200 yards from all the small rams and ewes. The bummer thing is the big rams are up on top of the cliff, probably six, 700 yards away, so. I'm just hoping he doesn't get busted by these small rams. And, uh, seems like the small ones might be making their way up the canyon, which would be good if the big rams followed. They stuck with them, so. I guess we just sit and wait and see what they do. Yeah. Got him. He got him, dude. Dude. He's down. Oh, <laughs> crazy. I am down. Dude. Let's go. Mr. Jameson put about a two hour stock on these. And, you know, we needed a little bit of luck sometimes in these hunts. And these ramps came down exactly how we needed them to. We just had to give it time and a good stock. And he put a darn good shot on it. And we got a ram down. So we're going to get up, meet up with him. and. See how he's feeling. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I saw them other ones start coming across. I'm like, I'm just, I gotta wait. Those younger ones, they picked me up one time and I just, I just stopped. And I was like, yep, and they started feeding again. And once they started feeding again, um, I noticed them like just continually moving this way and I looked over here and all these started getting up started moving and I was like oh they're gonna come over and I was ranging these I was like oh yeah I shot him at 416 yards so yep oh Craig <laughs> good oh, job man good job brother that was seemed like it took forever <laughs> I, it, I was sliding I'm surprised I don't have a hole in these pants I slid on this side on my 
on my hip all the way down here. Yep. Oh. And then I got down here and I'm like, how am I gonna how am I gonna shoot it? Yeah. Like I, I'm I'm used to laying down, you know, so I saw this pocket with that rock and I was like, that's a perfect chair. So I just took my bag right there, propped my bag up, put my shoulder against that thing and yep, pull the trigger. I have a uh, hash mark on my uh, on my scope for 416 yards. That's one of them. And I was like, oh, he's 416. I'm just going to use that and shoot him. <laughs> oh, man. Buddy, that's that's the big boy, too. I was, that's, I, the, big that's the biggest one I could see in there, you know. So there were two, like I said, they were pretty close. And then, the, then the, like the the white one. <laughs> yeah. But like I shot and whoa, whoa, put another one in and I'm looking through my scope. I'm like trying to find him. It, did I hit him? Did I hit him? And it, and then uh, I, then I caught a glimpse. I caught a glimpse of one whoa, just rolling. I was like, oh yeah. Get oh man. Ass. 21 years in the making. <laughs> oh man, I can't thank you guys enough for coming with me. I couldn't do this by myself, obviously. Well, we're we're about to go back to camp, get dinner ready. If you can go ahead and take care of this and bring this be, pack be it out, out and I'll be I'll be <laughs> right down there in them trees with a big fire going. <laughs> whenever you guys want to come back. <laughs> oh, oh, good job, brother. Man. Good job. Bro. Gosh, man. Good job. Thank you. I'm so Thank happy you. For you. Oh, I thought it was gonna take forever. I'm like, what, is this ever gonna come? to fruition man oh man thank you that is thank awesome <laughs> thank you lord thank uh, you jesus now let's go get some pictures <laughs> ah, man let's go get the ram Well, we got the sheep all quartered up, got it caped up to the head. I have the cape and the head with me, and uh, Kyle's got a front and back quarter, and Kevin's got a front and back quarter, and so we are packed. It's heavy, and we got uh, a pretty good hike straight up, so here we go. Up, up and away. How you feeling? I am elated and dead 
tired but we still got a long way to go so you just gotta this is a you know one of those things that's you know it's gonna be like hard you know and it's hard to to uh, train for for it other you know because it's hard to train at 11,000 feet you know um, especially when you're 49 but it's kind of one of those things where you just you muster it up and the energy to do it so uh, even if it's just a little bit at a time you know if I can do a hundred yards at a time hundred yards at a time hundred yards at a time you know I'll make it back to camp so uh, yeah it's rough <laughs> How does it feel? Just getting warmed up. <laughs> I don't want to ever see that part of the trail again. <laughs> uh, made it back to the top, up from the drainage that we shot the sheep in. Um, yeah, as you can see, I have nothing on. Uh, I made it, I don't know, halfway up. And uh, Kyle had to take my pack, so getting old, but uh, couldn't do it without those guys. No way. Like, yeah, if you ever think you can do a backcountry sheep hunt, you better have two good friends with you. So, oh, but we got, we're about uh, halfway back, um, but the rest is all downhill, so that's a good thing. We made it back to camp. What time is it? We made it. 6.53. That's not too bad. Did good. Kyle just said he checked his thing. We went five and a half miles and had 3,000 foot of elevation gain and 3,000 foot loss. So I am beat. These guys here did a lot of the work, a lot of it. I mean, packed the whole ram out basically. So, can't thank them enough. Um, yeah, I couldn't do this, you know, with just me and two other normal people. <laughs> I brought two superheroes with me. So, uh, I want to thank Hannah. I want to thank Megan for letting me have your husbands for a while. Uh, it means a lot to me. So, I have no way, like, I could never repay what they've done for me on this, so, made it possible, that's, that's what it was, so, but, uh, yeah, now it's time to take some boots off and let our feet breathe, I know mine are about ready to catch on fire, so, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's the day, that's what the day brought, a dead sheep and a lot of hiking. What you got, Mr. West? Well, uh, I came for two reasons. One is to help Craig see this through, but two, I wanted a, I wanted a physical and, and mental way to push myself, and I have done that and exceeded that today uh, on the physical side for sure. That was by far the 
most physically demanding day I've had in a long, long time. Um, and I'm, I'm actually thankful for that because when you push your bodies like that, you realize how lucky you are, how lucky we are to be here, how lucky we are that we're able to do this as hard as it is and as, and as many grunts and curse words that may have come out of me today, I'm thankful. I'm thankful to be here and I'm thankful to be tagging along. Well, uh, I think the, the thing that I was hoping to get out of this, like Kevin had mentioned, there was one big thing and it was uh, just to experience some, some remote back country with a good friend, with a bighorn sheep tagging. Uh, we said from the beginning, obviously we're here to kill a sheep. That'd be awesome. Um, but just to be back here and experience country like this, something I've never done. Uh, you know, this, this whole film that we're putting together, I promise you, does not do justice to the country that we're in. Um, you, you just can't capture that through a lens, and it's been unbelievable. And then to top it off, we find some rams on scouting day, and then we go in today, and and uh, they're in a tough spot. And so we uh, we make a game plan, decide to be aggressive, and Craig's going to uh, butt scoot 300 yards to get into position to... Uh, make an absolutely perfect shot at 416 yards and uh to top it all off we got it on on camera through the spotter too so i mean we came out here to enjoy enjoy god's country that he's given us the bible says that he makes himself known through his creation and that is what he has done uh right here and it's so evident that there is a god and uh and we get to uh like kevin mentioned we're blessed to experience this we're so lucky and fortunate to have bodies that are able to come do this and so uh couldn't have topped it off any better with, with craig's awesome shot and and now having the ram at camp and so uh we'll see what the next couple of days bring but uh the, the trip is made now it just gets better from here I just went back, I was going to put my shoes on, go down there and get the head and cape down and get the, get it caped completely off its head and uh, salt it. We were packing out tomorrow, um, but just wanted to, was trying to be, I guess, proactive with that cape. I really like to have that cape. He's got a really good looking cape. Uh, I was in my tent and I heard Kyle yell, hey, like that. And, and uh, it was uh, a hay that warranted more than, hey, look what's going on over here. It was, I knew that was probably, there's a bear. And sure enough, we, we had a grizzly come in right there to those trees right there behind me. And was, Kyle scared it and it, it ran off. I was over here at the water, filling up my, my cup here, turned around. I got about right here and I heard a loud, and I looked up about 30 to 40 yards right there and there's a there's a grizzly bear and so i pulled the bear sprout and i yelled hey in a super manly aggressive not scared voice um so that craig and kevin knew that there was a bear i didn't want to sound scared craig drew the pistol i had the bear spray and kevin came with the pistol behind and luckily that bear uh he pounced he could hear his his paws hit the ground and he took off running and and went around so uh that was pretty scary i've never had a, a grizzly encounter like that in the wild so um it just adds to this whole story of being back in the wild but i was just saying uh i think the story is good enough now so i don't need any more any more of those experiences but we've got 24 more hours to uh just be diligent looking around watching our backs and then hopefully those horses come in we can get that meat loaded and get out of here so Pretty crazy. Interesting experience. I'm sure we're going to have an interesting next 24 hours before the horses come in to get us. So, <laughs> uh, But that's what that right there is for, that bear, that bear fence. So hopefully it does its job.
Yep, trimmed up. Getting this hard skin off them. Fresh as it gets right there. Actually, I'm gonna put it in the middle. That's probably where it's the hottest. Sheep tenderloin. Pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Yep. Well, we've wrapped it all up. Uh, got everything all packed in the bags. And uh, just sitting here, kind of waiting on the horses to get here. The outfitter left this morning from the trailhead about 7.15. And he'll be heading through this country that took takes about five hours to get here on horseback. And, and uh, we are just kind of sitting here around the campfire this morning and, and we were sitting around talking about how beautiful this place is and how even the video and the photographs and stuff can't really do it justice like that it is so big that if you ever want to feel humbled or small this is the ideal place for it I mean because it can really it just makes you awestruck at, at being here and sitting here and looking at this every day for the past five days and uh, what it does to me is it brings to mind my relationship with Christ and and I look at that and and being saved when I was nine years old uh, I accepted Christ into my heart and you know I've followed him since then uh, you know obviously every relationship has its ups and downs and we walk away and come back and we walk away and come back and but Jesus is always there um, and you know I'm coming to you just like Paul said uh, with definitely not lofty words um, I stumble and and fumble about my words you know sharing my faith but uh, being up here and seeing this truly embodies what God tells us that you can look at my creation and know that I am God and it's just such a such a humbling experience uh, to be here you know and know that I have that relationship with him and he also says with that is that we are to submit to him and and follow him and that's where the change comes in in our lives. That's where you have that big change in your heart. You know, um, there's so many things you know people chase after in this world, and I can tell you the main thing that you need to be chasing after is Jesus. Uh, he's going to be the person that will get you through the hardest times, and he will he will help you through the valleys and put you on that mountaintop. Uh, which is where we are. <laughs> but I just want to, you know, just wanted to share that with, with anybody that, you know, wanted to take the time to listen to this. Uh, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior, give me a call. <laughs> give Kyle a call. You just talk to your pastor if you go to church. Um, you know, there's so many people probably around you that would be willing to share the gospel with you. Um, and basically, it's simple. Christ died to save us from our sins. He rose on the third day from, uh, from the grave. And he did that in order to reconcile that relationship with us and God. Because um, without that, we would have never had a chance. And uh, just kind of wrapping this up today, I, I am so happy to be here. I am so happy that these guys came with me. And uh, I couldn't have picked two better guys and asked to come with me. And uh, just a wonderful time of fellowship up here uh, 
enjoying God's creation. And I'll leave you with a little quote that I actually came uh, I wrote it down in my phone a while back. It's been here for I don't know how long, but being on this sheep hunt, it really, uh, really uh, kind of ends it for me. Train like an athlete, eat like a nutritionist, shoot like, shoot like a sniper, and most importantly, love like Jesus.